Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. My favorite day of the week, Masterclass Friday. So for those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you once again before I go on a long sabbatical break. So uh, just a heads up, if you're joining me and you're like, hey, you know, you're watching the replay and you're like, where's the one for this week? It'll be replays for the next few weeks because uh, one of the great benefits here at Adobe is every five years, employees get to take um, several weeks off as a sabbatical. So my five, my five year, you know, 25 years was last year. And I held off taking my sabbatical till this year. So I will be off until the mid middle of July. And they'll run replays and things of my classes in between now and then. But this will be the last live one until July. So happy summer, everybody. Now, for, again, for those of you who are new, um, welcome. This is our weekly masterclass series for the Worldwide Evangelist here at Adobe. So if you are um, interested in photography, graphic design, video editing, audio editing, um, UI, UX design, digital painting, digital drawing, Fridays are for you. Uh, because each one of us does our, and also CX, uh, I should say, Adobe Express for uh, social media posts. Because uh, I keep forgetting about Katrina, our newest evangelist, who does her masterclass on Fridays as well. But if you're interested in anything and taking a good hour learning those kinds of things, that's what Fridays are for. And even if you can't watch the whole thing live or if you can't watch it live, there unless there's some technical difficulty, they're always available as a replay. Uh, so with that said, uh, thanks for all the, the sabbatical wishes. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this break. Five years is about right. Five years when you want a nice break, uh, in addition to regular vacations on the other four years. Uh, but anyway... Uh, today I'm going to do something a little fun. This is compositing for photographers. If you're watching on Adobe Live, great. I can see uh, all the comments from Sam Peterson, our moderator, J James, John, Kathy, Richard, um, so Ozzy, so forth and so on. And if you're watching over on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, like Hassan and Jay and Bucky and uh, Bucky, <laughs> Bucky's left multiple messages. Um, great from Taiwan uh, or is that Britain? No, London, London. Um, so great to see you all on your various platforms, but if you really want to participate in the chat, if you really want to make sure I see your question, head over to b.net slash Adobe live. Uh, that's the main chat I'll be, uh, looking at, but of course, um, I'll try and catch the comments on the other platforms as well. Uh, so good morning, Wayne. And again, um, like see so that was from Facebook. So if you, if I see your question, I'll happily answer it. If I don't see it and just ask it again. And if I still don't see it, head over to b.net slash Adobe live where I will definitely try to pay attention to it. All right. So let's talk about today's topic, which is compositing for photographers and, or uh, as I posted on Instagram, composting for photographers left off an eye. Um, but compositing for photographers is really about photographers not just taking the image out of their camera and delivering just that image to their client, but actually taking the image out of their, out of their camera and um, putting something with it, whether it's something behind it, whether it's something on top of it, whether it's combining multiple images together, whatever it is, that's all in the realm of compositing. Now, there are professional compositors that work for magazines and TV stations and whatever, and the best composites are the ones that you don't think is a composite. In other words, you see an image, you just accept the image as is. But behind the scenes, that was a composite. So you know how they always say the best, the best crime is the, the one that you never got caught for. So because you never got caught, no one knew it was a crime. That's the best, same thing with compositing. Um, compositing means that uh, you don't look at it and say, oh, yeah, they, they put that together in Photoshop. Like that's... That usually means there's something visible about your composite that gives it away that you did it. Uh, the best composites are the ones that people just look at and say, cool image, and they don't even think that it wasn't shot that way, or it wasn't shot in that location, or it wasn't done that way. So that's what makes good compositing from a photographer standpoint. Now, of course, there are cool designs you can do, and, and I'm not talking about graphic design, I'm not talking about... Um, art where you are trying to make it look like a composite on purpose and it's obvious it wasn't shot that way that's different 
I'm talking about photographer composites where the background that you shot it on wasn't the best and you replaced that background for a better background and it looks natural. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about photographer compositing. Okay, so with that said, that's what we're gonna focus on today. There's all types of compositing. There's no wrong way other than you tried to make it look natural and it didn't look natural. That would be the only wrong way. Uh, but if you're trying to make it look artistic, great, go for that. If you're trying to make it look unique and look like it was done in Photoshop, great, go for that. But if you're trying to make it look, you're not trying to make it look like it wasn't shot that way, then that's what we're doing today. All right, let's head over to my desktop where I've got a series of different images and people and things and stuff going on. I'm going to take you through some simple composites, some just like how to get started. And then we'll go through some trouble, some, some problem composites and how, show how to fix those as well. Now, there are usually two, two types of composites from a photographer standpoint, planned <laughs> and unplanned. So a planned composite means you, you went into the shot knowing up front that you're going to replace the background or you're gonna put the person on a different location or whatever. So you went in with that in mind, like before you even took your camera out, you knew that's what you were going to do. The unplanned composite is the one where someone asked you to do something like, can you replace this background? Can you make it less busy? Can you do this? And you didn't shoot it or you didn't shoot it that way. And now you're having to make it work. So I'll give you examples of both. I'll give you problem examples. And I'll give you examples of where they were planned. I'll give you some that weren't planned, but ended up working out okay anyway. So for example, I did, although I did not plan this shot to be a composite. This was a, uh, my neighbor's prom, uh, my neighbor's daughter's prom dress in her shot. And she, of course, is in my studio. And I, and I, I was just taking pictures because they, they wanted me to take some pictures on her prom day. And I just took some shots. I didn't plan this as a composite. But I, I shot it in such a way that it's, it's a white background, easy to cut out. If I do composite it, it won't be the end of the world. Like, it'll be easy to do. Then there's the unplanned composite where someone says, hey, this is my daughter's graduation. Uh, can you get rid of all those people in the background? <laughs> so that's like, I didn't shoot this. It's a mess. It's got, not going to be fun, not going to be easy. And, and then I remember replying, like, replace them with what? Like, like either I'm going to have to put this on a totally different background. Um, and, and then I even asked, well, wasn't there, couldn't you have, like, moved her to a different spot where there were no people? And they were like, people were everywhere. There was nowhere we can get this where there weren't going to be a bunch of people in the background. I find that hard to believe because there's always a way. But anyway, this is what I got. So this is what I had to deal with. So I did do the composite for this one as well. Um, and then there were shots like this, same person graduating, and it's like, well, they want the school in the background, but then you got all those people, so it's kind of distracting. And uh, this one where, you know, I guess the important thing is the sign and the school in the background, but again, all this distraction, the tree growing out of her head, all of that stuff. So this is what I mean by when people give you problems and expect, since you know how to use Photoshop, it's, you know, easy for you to do it. It's like, well, Putting her on a different background is not hard, but putting her on a back, different background and making it look real, that's what's hard. Like, I could put it on a, a solid color background, no problem. But is that what you want? Like, is, you know, would the sign be there? Would the pole be there that's holding the sign up? Do we need that tree? Like, so these are the kinds of things that become an issue when people say, can you just do a simple, can you do a composite for me? All right, so let's start, let's start with a simple one. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this photo. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. I'm in Lightroom, by the way. So I also have Lightroom Classic open in the background for my classic fans. Um, same collection, same everything. So it doesn't matter which one I'm in. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, actually, let's go to Classic. I'm going to do Command E in uh, Classic, and it would be Command Shift E in Lightroom. And both of those will open up a copy of it since it's a raw file in Photoshop. All right, so now I've got this uh, raw file open, and um, I, I want to cut her out from the background. Now I don't. Let's say I don't have a. I do have a background in mind, but let's say I didn't have one in mind yet. Then what I could do is I could just simply say, okay, let's get her ready, let's cut her out, and then we'll worry about the background that we're going to put it on. So I would 
go in and do a select subject. And that should select her. She's the subject of the photo, pretty easy. And then I would go in and do a select and mask so that we can go ahead and tell it to remove the background like that. And I would also go in, I can see some white there in her hair. And let me just, by the way, make sure that's good. That's set back to zero. Last time I did this in front of you guys, I had problems because I realized there was a setting that I had wrong and it was really messing up the hair. And it, by the way, so if you watched last week at the very end, I was like having real trouble cutting out hair. And it was because I had this shift. It remembered my setting from another photo and shift edge was almost all the way to the left. So it was just doing weird things. So I put it back at zero where it belongs and now it's behaving properly again. Okay. Anyway, so last week's wasn't, it was user error. It wasn't the software. Anyway, all right, so we got our cutout. Now, again, I'm, I'm not going to go in and nitpick every little detail of the cutout. You can do that on your own time, but you got it. All right, so now what, what I'm going to do is uh, let that put, uh, have decontaminate colors on, which will automatically set it to a uh, new layer with a mask. If it didn't, you can go ahead and choose new layer with a mask instead of uh, selection or just new, you know, just um layer mask you want or new layer you want a new layer with a mask so that if there is something that's still not cut out properly you can go back and fix it all right so now that gives me that new layer with a mask so now she's free to take anywhere to any background that i choose now where what background i don't even know what school she went to like i don't even know what school she's graduating from I, I didn't get any of those details just hey neighbor hey can you're a photographer can you take some pictures sure did it um but if I had a shot of the school, or even if I were the photographer for this whole thing, I'd go drive by and get a photo of the school, like to make sure I've got the right school. But anyway, doesn't matter because I just want, I want it to match this dress. I want it something elegant. So I went out over to Adobe Stock and I just literally searched for elegant staircase. That's, those are my search terms. And what it came back with that I liked was this one. So I was like, oh yeah, that's a beautiful staircase. And here's what you have to look for. This wasn't the first staircase that came up. This was after scrolling through a few options and picking one because what I had to look for, not only was a staircase that looks the way I wanted to look, but the number one dead giveaway of a bad composite is one where the perspective doesn't match. Look at the way she's standing. Look at the camera angle straight on. I'm actually crouched down or sitting down shooting at a slight up angle, but basically dead on. So if my staircase, if the camera's pointing down onto the staircase, that's not going to match. If the person is shooting from the floor up at the staircase, that's not going to match. So you kind of want to find whatever or shoot whatever background you're going to use needs to match the subject. Otherwise, it's going to be like something, people won't even know what's wrong. They're just going to say, something doesn't look right in that photo. When they say something doesn't look right in that photo, <laughs> that's what they mean. Either the perspective's off, or like Sam's saying, or the lighting's off. So we're going to talk about lighting and all that and, and, and color cast and all the things that would happen in, in a background. Luckily, this white staircase, white background I shot it on, so it won't be too hard to match. But I'm going to give you some examples of where it's not that case, where it doesn't match, like it wasn't shot both ways perfectly and the, like the color isn't the same. In this case, it's going to be easy. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take that layer. I can either copy her, I could drag the selection over, I can drag the layer over, I can right click on the layer and duplicate the layer over to the other image. There are like five or six ways to get this over to the other image. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag this over. Uh, this is my favorite way up to the same tab. And before I let go, drag down onto that. And then it will say, so now that's that. Okay. So this is another dead giveaway. The size is off. <laughs> the size is way off. She's in a dollhouse staircase. And uh, yeah, that's not going to work. All right. So let's, uh, let's get the size right. So let's go ahead and just, uh, I can grab her mini handle because it's already set to perspective and then I can move her down and look, look at how that flows right onto the steps. It just looks perfect. Now, the other thing you have to be concerned about 
And this is just going to take practice and judgment and looking at the photo and just and maybe even having other people look at it too is how high should how how tall should she be? She's not she's right in front of the stairs on the first and maybe the second stair. So would she be that short? No, that looks too tiny. See, so size and perspective is also important, uh, not just uh, the color. So I'm going to hold on. Uh, actually, I'll just do it this way. So that's too short, um, obviously, because that looks like she's very tiny next to those stairs. That's too tall because it looks like it doesn't look real because now when you start to look at the stairs, she's not that far away from the stairs. So therefore, she shouldn't be that tall. She's right in front of the stairs. Now, if she was 10, 15 feet in front of the stairs, yeah, the stairs could look that small. She could be that tall right in front of the camera. But you have to really start to look at when you're doing your composites to get the size right to make sure that it's going to look good when you do it. Oh, so I'm scrolling instead of sizing. So I would say right about there. Now, up a little, down a little, but that's in the ballpark. That's going to be about right for the size of her dress, the size of the stairs, where she's standing, so forth and so on. She shouldn't be too much shorter than that. She shouldn't be too much taller than that. And that way you get, um, you get the proper size. So someone's saying, yep, make sure you convert it to a smart object so that when you size it, if you size it down and you need to size it back up, you don't lose resolution. I agree. Um, but chances are I'm not going to be doing a ton of sizing here. So I'm going to try and get it right the first time. But yes, that would be the safety factor is that when you drop it in, convert it to a smart object first, then when you scale it down, if you made it too small and then you wanted to bring it back up, um, you wouldn't lose resolution because it would be a smart object. Um, also, um, chances are though, you're not, hopefully not going to be doing that big of a drastic size up and down each time. So you shouldn't be losing that much to begin with. All right. So, um, I'm going to guess and just from my looking at it and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, people love to tell me I'm wrong. So you can, <laughs> if you think otherwise, but I'm going to say that's about right. That's about the right size. Now, you may not want her in the middle of the stairs. You may want to move her over a little bit for compos composition standpoint. Um, but that's about the size I think she should be. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do that. Now, luckily, uh, the next thing you might need to think about would be shadows. But because the dress is on the ground and still has a shadow right there in the front of it from the original shot, yeah, I don't need to add a whole bunch of shadows to this. You, like the shadow, the dress wouldn't be casting the shadow out just like it was in the wasn't in the original because it's already on the ground. So I don't have to worry about shadows. And by the way, um, photographers that when you look at most composites, they don't include feet because feet adds a whole nother level of complexion, meaning you have to get the shadows right on the ground. So most of those composites you see uh, when they're trying to keep it simple, don't include the full body like I, like I did here. Here it was easy because the dress is touching the ground. But when the, when, you, when the subject's feet are showing, then you got to deal with shadows. I'm going to show you an example of that too so you, would have to, so you get to see what that process looks like. Oh my God, well, you know, how would the shadows look on the ground? And it looks, you don't want the person to look like they're floating above the ground. So that becomes an issue when you have feet involved. All right, so that would be that composite. If I were to, and, and again, I, I don't really have to deal with the color and the lighting because she was photographed in a white background. This is kind of a white background. So the lighting kind of looks the way it's supposed to look. But if this was a red staircase, or I'm sorry, a blue staircase, and she was photographed in a white background or whatever, then I would have lighting issues to deal with, which we're gonna do uh, next composite. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And we'll go ahead and close this. We don't need to save this. Um, but anyway, that will return it back to, it should return it back to whichever Lightroom I was in. I wonder why I didn't come back to this. Huh. All right, anyway, I should, should have returned. I think I hit save. But anyway, let's go ahead and do our next one. Uh, I've got the real copy of that anyway. I don't need it to be saved here. So let's go ahead and do this one. This is a fun one because this, this is the colors that won't match. Now, again, I photographed this particular series for Adobe Stock. I did not photograph it for compositing. So, but luckily it does not show feet, so it'll be easy. And let's go ahead and get this one going. 
All right, so let's go to, uh, so I'll, I'll show you basically, I'll show you both ways. Let's go to Lightroom. Let's do it here. And let's see, which one do I want? I want, yeah, this one's fine. Okay, so Command Shift E or Windows Control Shift E. And that'll open it up in Photoshop. And what I want for this one is I want kind of a, like a hospital background. So how, where, where would I get my hospital background from if I, can't, if I don't have access to a hospital to go photograph it? Well, I grabbed a few. Um, and where I got them from is I'm going to show you how to get your backgrounds for free. So stock.adobe.com is Adobe Stock. And there's a secret to Adobe Stock that's been around now for about a year or two, almost almost two years. And that there, before that, like if you wanted something from Adobe Stock and you didn't have a plan, you had to pay for it. You had to buy image by image, which is great for us photographers because we get paid based on you buying stock. But Adobe decided that they wanted people to be able to experience stock photography in other applications like uh, Creative Cloud Express or Adobe Express. So we had to make a certain set of the content free. Photographers still get paid, but for you, it's free. And all you have to do when you want a free image is change it from all to free. That means it'll only search the free collection. And that way you won't have to pay for any, any results. Like any results that come up, you can download freely. So I'm gonna search for a hospital to just to show you how that would work. And all of these are free. Like whatever one you want, if you see one in there you like, like I like that one, I licensed it. I liked this one even though there were people in it because I could crop out the people and get that hallway. I licensed that one. And I licensed this, uh, like this examining room, which kind of scares me when I look at it. But anyway, I licensed those three images because they were completely free. So if you see an image, you just click license. It will add it if you're signed in, which you probably need to be. It will add it to your Creative Cloud library and download a JPEG for you to use. So that way you get to experiment with compositing with any images you want for free. Stock.adobe.com, click on free, whatever you search for. The only, the only results will come up will be the free one. So what that means also is that those aren't all the hospital images. Those are just the free ones. There are, you know, maybe thousands more that you have to pay for, but by narrowing down the free collection, you're only getting the ones that are free. So I'm going to show you uh, each one of these. I'm going to open up these backgrounds. That's the examining room. Um, this is the one with the people in it that I like. And this is the other one, and I'm, I, I downloaded this one on purpose. Look at the angle of this one. See how it's kind of shot low, like from the bottom up? Like it's kind of like the person crouched down or they laid down on the floor and photographed this. Also, look at the ceiling. See how the ceiling's curved? So they either use the fisheye or some wide angle lens or some weird lens that's creating curvature in this as well. So this would be my least favorite choice to do a composite because it's, and that doesn't match my subject. So uh, Nicholas is asking a very important question. If I composite with a stock image, is it still my image? No, it is not technically your image from the standpoint uh, you own all the rights to it and you can sell it as, as a composite, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the you can use it you can print it you can sell the image you know because you did all the work to do it and that's okay but what you can't do is do the composite and then upload that to stock to sell again that's the difference so like you can't use someone else's background to make your image and then resell it on adobe stock so the, you can read the license agreement i don't pretend to be a lawyer but that is my understanding of how it works okay so I would not use this background because it's just weird angle, curved lens, so forth and so on. That just wouldn't work. I like this one a lot. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this one ready. And by the way, the other one I could use is that one. But I'm going to go ahead and close this one because it just looks too examine roomish, a roomy, roomy. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, hit my crop tool here and just crop out those people all the way to the edge because I just don't need them. All right, now that we got our people cropped out, we can go ahead and zoom this up. We can go ahead and grab Krista. Um, Krista is not in the medical profession, but I had this outfit 
set up so that I can sell this image on stock. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, same thing, select subject. Uh, let's go ahead and cut her out. Let's use uh, select a mask. And yep, my hair is cutting out a lot better now. Uh, and again, I could go refine it, but that's good enough for example. And let's go ahead and make a new layer with a mask. And now let's go ahead and drag that layer in to the hospital scene and to the point that um, uh, Nicholas was asking earlier. So the other thing that you could do is you could go ahead and convert this to a smart object. So that way, as you're scaling it up and down and up and down, you're not losing resolution because she needs to definitely be scaled up. All right, so let's go ahead and scale her up. And I would say right there, that's about the right size. I mean, if you, you saw that person in the hallway, there shouldn't be a giant and they shouldn't be very tiny either. Like that's too small, that's too small, that's too small. That's getting to be about right. I would say from where they're standing, that's about right for how far they are away from the camera versus the rest of the hallway. All right, so now that looks natural, except now this is what I meant by the other one was easy. White background onto a staircase that's white. Piece of cake. This is a white background, a gray background, photographed onto a kind of bluish hallway. And the lighting doesn't look right. Now, you'd probably get away with this. Like somebody look at this and they just think doctor, hallway, medical, whatever, and they let it go. But this is not correct. You're not done yet if you let it go like this. So I'm going to show you two ways to fix the lighting of the subject. I'm going to show you the old way I used to do it, the manual way. I'm going to show you a new neural filter that does it that, that does as well. You pick which one you like better. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just simply um, select the, the shape of her. So I'm going to hold down my command key on Mac, um, PC, that'd be the control key. When I click her layer icon, that makes a selection. Now, I don't want to select her. She's already been selected. I want to select the background in the shape of her. So now that I've selected the background, I want a new layer that's the, that's the cutout of her. So basically her silhouette of that background. So we'll just hit Command J or, or PC Control J. Now that will basically give us this. It would give us that cutout of her on that background. Now it won't be a perfect cutout because of the hair, but it's, it's close enough. I only need it for color. Now move it up to the top. And that's what I meant by the hair. You still see the outline. That's okay. We're not, you're not going to see it in a minute anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that silhouette, that color layer. So let's say uh, color, and we're going to call it color average because that's what it's going to end up being. So we're going to take that color average layer that we just created, and we're going to go to our filter menu and come down to blur and blur, and we're going to choose average. And so what average does and it's, it's this, 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 this is pretty easy because it's pretty much all the same color. But what average does is it takes whatever's on that layer and takes all the colors of that layer and averages it out to one single color. So let's go ahead and hit average. And there it is. That's the single color of the average of all those colors. Now that we've got that single average on top, what we're going to do is just simply um, change the blend mode. So we're going to change the blend mode to a specific blend mode called color. And that's too strong, but that's the color that we're starting to aim towards that she, she would be if she was under that light. It's just too much. So all we do is take that layer and we drop the opacity down to the 30 range. So it's 30, 35, 20, you know, 39, somewhere in there. And you might need to go a little bit lower because that's still making her skin look very cold. So we might need to drop it down below the 30 level. Uh, somewhere around there at 25. So if I go too low, her, 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 her natural skin color starts to come back. So you can just bump it up a little at a time until about right there. So I ended up around 23 on the opacity. So this is before, this is after. And it's just kind of taking that, <laughs> Smurfy, it's kind of taking that that natural skin color on a gray background off and said if you photographed her under this light under these in this hallway she would look bluish because of all the blue light that's coming into the hallway now again you you could still play with it and say no it's still too blue that maybe 20 19 20 is about right instead of 30 that gets to be a little bit better because you don't want a person to look too like too cold you don't want them to look like frankenstein 
So anyway, you want the skin to still look like skin. All right, so now that we got that, uh, that's one way to do it. I'm gonna turn that way off. So I'm gonna turn off what I just did. I'm gonna go back to the original layer of her and I'm going to show you the new way to do it. I don't use the old way anymore, I use the new way. So um, filter, neural filters, and we're gonna come down to harmonization. Harmonization is a, is a neural filter that um, is, is still in beta, so it's still not done yet. And um, you basically start with the layer you want to harmonize against the background you want. So we're on her layer, we wanna harmonize it against this background. So we choose the background layer. Um, now, I'm gonna warn you right off the bat, every time I use the harmonization uh, neural filter, it's always, the default is always too high. Like it's, I always have to turn it down. Like it's all, I've never once said, clicked harmonization, background, done. Like it, the slider is always in the default position, which is too high. All right, so when I, when I let it calculate, you're gonna say, ugh, because it, it's just not that bad. But anyway, normally it's a lot worse than this, <laughs> like, because the strength is almost all the way to the end, it's at 75. So I usually always drop the strength down to at least 50 or somewhere in that neighborhood. So when I let go, we'll let it recalculate. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now you can see your before and after. So here's your before and here's your after. And it even does a little to the hair as well. But here's your before, here's your after. And harmonization just does, and like colorize works, but harmonization does a little bit uh, more natural, I guess is the best. That's why I say I use this now instead of the old method I used to use with the average. Um, and again, you have that strength slider, you have the other sliders that you can play with, you have the brightness slider too. So if, the, if you thought the image, maybe the original is still too bright for the background that it's on. So you can bring down the brightness of that layer as well to kind of tone it down to make it look more like that hallway. So you have a lot more control here to play versus um, the average, which you only really have opacity once you've averaged it. So that's the harmonization filter. When you click OK, it's always going to output to a new layer by default. So here's before, here's average, here's harmonization. And I think the harmonization just does an overall better job now. So um, that's my method for getting the color to look like the background and getting the lighting to look like the background um, in a simple neural filter. Now you can still tweak it. You can still go into levels. You can still go into curves. You can still go into camera raw filter, you can still go into all the other things you like to do, but this way you get um, you get the best of both worlds. Now, there's one more kind of finishing touch you can do. I'm gonna create a new layer from all the visible layers. So on the Mac, Command, Option, Shift, E, PC, Control, Alt, Shift, E. And that will create a new composite layer that I'm gonna put all the way at the top. Now I'm just going to call this one composite. One of the other um, things you can do to kind of unify your composite when you're done is apply a creative profile to it. Because when you apply a creative profile to it, then it kind of makes it like, because it's applying it to the, to the subject and the background at the same time to kind of give it a, a unified look. So you can do it with the camera raw filter, you can do it back in Lightroom, whichever you prefer. Um, I would probably do it back in Lightroom, to be honest with you, because here, let's save this. And let's see if it, if it brought it, I forgot which Lightroom I launched it from. I launched it from this one, or did I launch it from Classic? I can't remember. I think I launched it from Classic. I don't know why my images aren't coming back into their collections like they're supposed to. That's weird, all right, anyway. Uh, we go back to Photoshop. You would do it in Camera Raw Filter or you would do it in Back in Lightroom. So we're going to do um, Convert for Smart Filters so that that can be undone if we don't like it. We're going to go to Camera Raw Filter and we're going to go to the profiles here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, those are presets. We want to go to the profiles here, Creative Profiles. So you have all these different Creative Profiles. You have Modern, Vintage, Artistic, so forth and so on. And see what it's doing? Like it's a, it's applying a look to the whole photo to make the whole photo look like less of a composite. 
Uh, so you can like experiment, try which one you want. By the way, each one of these has a slider. So if it was too much, you could pull it down a little bit or go, go full on with it. And that kind of unifies the look of the whole composite after the fact, uh, just to make it look more natural than it did just applying, um, you know, harmonization and, and getting the color right. So that way you kind of like get a look for the whole photo after it's done. So that's like a finishing move. All right, could it be because you have started uh, a new file in Photoshop? It could be, uh, but that one, oh yeah, you're right, because <laughs> I, I drug it into the hospital image, not the Christ image. Bingo, that's why. All right, so, um, yep, because it's in the library now, I see it. So that was, that was my bad. Uh, I should have done it this way. I should have put the background in this image. Then when I save it, go back to Lightroom, it would be there. Good catch. All right, uh, next up, let's do just that. This time we are going to do it that way. Let's go in and do the complicated one before I run out of time. So let's go here. And let, this was a nightmare. When I saw this photo, I was like, oh my God, what are you doing to me? I was supposed to get rid of all these people and do what? So when I when I threw it back at them and said, well, what do you want? Like, like I, I first, the first thing I did was select the subject and try to put less emphasis on the people just by blurring the background and kind of making it look like a shallow depth of field. And they were like, yeah, no, we want, we want something else. Um, so that didn't work. So instead, I, I just went back to them and said, I'm at a loss. What do you want behind her? And they said, well, can you just do like a field of grass? And I was like, oh, that's he's a piece of cake. That's easy. But when you start talking about, there's no way I'm going to clone out all those people. There's no way I'm going to basically get rid of the people and keep this background. That's just not going to happen. It's, it's just too much. There's not, there's nothing to pull from. There's people from left to right. There's no, I don't even see any, anything in between. There's nothing to, to do. If I tried to clone the sidewalk all the way back, it would be a disaster and not worth the time, especially since I was doing it as a favor. All right. So let's go ahead and just, um, uh, open this up. And um, the person that said, because I wasn't, uh, I was creating a new file and not using the existing one, you're absolutely right. That's why it wasn't working. So this time we're going to use the existing one. All right. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, uh, let's get her, her cut out from her background. And this was, again, a pain in the neck because the other part of this was you had, flow you know, you had flowers like mixed in with the background as well. So it's her, she wasn't that big of a deal. But the flowers and then, of course, the dreaded feet, <laughs> her feet are showing. So you got to deal with the shadows and all of that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this going. So select subject is where I always start. Photoshop does usually a pretty good job. In this case, it, it did OK. It didn't get all of the hat and it didn't get all of the it didn't get any of the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to, um, to to tweak it. By using. Um, the uh, object selection tool. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key to add and just use my object selection tool and say, yeah, I want I want the hat too. And um, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything else besides the flowers. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, the, left, the right side looks okay. All right, let's get the flowers now. Um, and I could use um, the quick selection tool again, shift key and kind of just quickly go ahead and just grab more of the flowers that didn't get selected. Now I'm starting to grab that guy's shoulder in front. And again, I don't know how far out I need to go, like who would care? And a lot of, a lot of uh, compositing is who would care? Like there's a stick or something sticking out from this. I don't know, is that part of the pole or part of the flowers? I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say it's not important, whatever it is. There's also a piece of cellophane or plastic sticking out from this. Does anyone care if the plastic's not there? Probably not. They just really want to see her holding a bouquet of flowers. So uh, if you think those things are important, by all means, include them. I don't. So I'm going to eliminate them. Then I'm just going to hold down my option key, which is the opposite of add. It's subtract and subtract off the pieces that uh, I don't need. Now let's zoom in, do a better job. Her arm's missing. So let's get that in there. And we don't want this person's dress. Let's subtract some of that. Yeah, like this, this, this is all, okay, I see what this all is. This is like all the plastic and everything from those flowers. Guess what? We're not keeping that. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and get this this part of the plower, and we're going to get this, and we will get all that. Okay, now um, we're missing her shoulder. Oops. Undo. Okay, we're not going to get it that way, so let's go ahead and make this brush smaller. It's just it just wants all of that. Okay, let's do use a different method. We're going to use a regular lasso. Hold down my shift key and just carefully lasso this in. All right, good. And we're going to uh, lasso this in. We're missing part of. I can't really uh, see that. That's her dress actually. So all of that is her dress showing through the cellophane. So this is what I meant by, yeah, this was definitely not shot with compositing in mind because you'd have this person not be there. All right, I'm going to like, I'm just really trying to get the outline now. I'll worry about the details in a minute. All right, so let's try and get some of this out of here. And some of this out of here. Good, good, good. So I'm just alternating between option when I want to subtract, like I want to subtract this, and alt or um, I'm sorry, shift when I want to add. So option or alt is to subtract, shift when I want to add. Like you got just little things in here that are just, if we see them, we can get rid of them now. It's just less of a problem later. Okay, good, good, good. This person's purse and back. Let's get rid of all of that. All right, good. Missing some of the shoulder here. So shift, all right, not worried about the hair just yet. We'll get that in select and mask. I'm just, try just trying to get the outline. Again, I'm not trying to get all of that. That's part of it, but I don't want it. And the rest should be good. All right, let's look at the feet. This is missing part of the feet here. And just this edge. Okay, good, good, good. All right, again, not going to be super nitpicky there, but you get the idea. Okay, so now that we got a, a decent outline, now we're going to select and mask. And this is where we can refine it. So select and mask does a really good job, um, usually. So we can go ahead and, it's already actually got all the options on I want. Let's just go ahead here. And, and by the way, the other problem with this photo, as I, as I, when I start working and selecting mask with it, is it's super low res. Like they sent, they didn't send me the original. Yeah. Like it's just doing crazy stuff with there. They didn't send me like a, a phone shot. They sent me like a screenshot of something like this was just super not high quality of an image. So I could have up resed it first to probably get some better results. And that would be the other thing I would recommend is that you use the uh, enhanced details if you get a low res image before you even start trying to work with it. Because that way you, you'll get a better um, cutout because you'll have higher resolution to work with. Yeah, because the edges on this are horrible. All right, let's do a smart radius. So we can bring some of those edges back. All right, so. Garbage in, garbage out. You give me a bad photo, I can't make it. I can't make it phenomenal. I can only do the best I can. All right. So now that we got that, uh, we'll go ahead and say new layer with mask. And the bottom flower next to BK ladies dress. Yep, got it. All right. Um, all right. So now that we got this, we've got her cut out. So I found this grass scene. This is what it looks like. And instead of what well, the person, you know, the person that. Uh, figure that out instead of me compositing you onto this new background this new photoshop file we're actually going to use this in her image so we're just going to go ahead and drag it over and um it will be whatever size it is compared to the original and we're going to go ahead and just like um hold down the option or alt key and scale it up so it fills the frame good 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 and now we're just going to drop it in behind her all right. Now, again, I, I will go in and mask out some of this um, this bouquet. This bouquet is still a mess, but for the most part, and, and probably clean up some of this edge on the right side, especially, 
because this edge is not awesome. So I could go into the mask, I could use a paintbrush, I'd probably use a hard edge brush. I like my brush uh, smaller. And I, I would just use a stylus probably, it'd be a lot easier. I would just go ahead and clean up that edge so it just doesn't look so rough. And all I'm doing is adjusting the mask, like so I'm not really deleting anything. And if there are any holes missing, switch to white. Or if there are any pieces missing, switch to white. And that will bring those pieces back. So that's why I always output with a new layer with a mask. So that way, I can go in and clean stuff up that doesn't look great. All right, but you get the idea. So go around your edges, clean them up. Nope, <laughs> wrong color. There we go. There we go. And same thing in here. So I might go into the white, just kind of paint out some of this that doesn't need to be here and reshape this bouquet a bit. But again, those are details that you're going to spend more time on. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend time on here because we're almost out of time. So let's just take your time, go around, get the details. You got it. All right, so now that we got her on the grass, two things. Number one, she's not the right color for this outdoor scene. Number two, she looks almost like she's floating because there's no shadow. Um, so let's get the, you know, flip a coin. We can do the shadow first or the, um, or the color first. Uh, I'll do the shadow first. Now, lots of ways to do a shadow. So you can paint one in. It depends on if you need the shadow to like be cast onto the ground. That's a, that's a different technique. Um, you have to also look at where the light is coming from on the original subject and the new background because they're not the same. So that's another kind of a giveaway. But so the light looks like it's coming in from this side of the photo over to this side. But you also, if you look at the ground, you've got trees, you've got light coming in from behind her. So you, you can kind of pick and choose. But if I were going to put a shadow down on the ground, I'd put it on this side. Um, or you could just paint one under her feet. It, it's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I would do in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm going to go ahead and apply that layer mask. So I don't need it separate anymore on that duplicate. Because this is going to be our shadow. On our shadow layer, I'm just going to bring up levels, which brings up my levels window over here. And I'm just going to grab this bottom white slider and just move it over to make that a silhouette. Okay, so now we've got a silhouette in the shape of our subject. Okay, so now that we've done that, you can, um, we're going to blur it, we're going to lower the opacity, we're going to lay it down, we're going to do all those things. But uh, I just want to show you some techniques that you might do to do this. So you might go in, you could use perspective warp, you could use distort, you could use... Um, yeah, perspective work or distort. This is pretty much going to be your choices. So I'm going to uh, free transform. I'm going to right click and I'm going to use distort. All right. Um, then I can go ahead and distort this and start laying it down. All right. And keep in mind the shadow is currently in front of her, so we'd move it to the back once we get it down. Okay, so let's say we're going to lay it down that way. All right, so now we would blur the crap out of it. Well, let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Not quite that much. Maybe a little bit less. No, more than that. All right, maybe something like that. And then we can either use a blend mode or we can lower the opacity. So um, lowering the opacity is kind of kind of give you that that kind of it's all even, which shadows are rarely even like that. And also got to remember, don't forget to put the shadow behind her, not on top of her. So we want it under her feet, not above her feet. And then also keep in mind you can move it as well. It is a layer, so you can move it kind of like underneath her more. 
and you get something like that. So just that's just lowering the opacity. Now, if we take the opacity back up, we could also look at blend mode. So we just hover over the blend modes until we kind of see one we like. I kind of like soft light because soft light looks more natural on, on the grass. Hard light, vivid. Yeah, I'm going to go with soft light. All right. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. And it's also just, again, I keep moving it over because I want that other foot there we go. I, want, I don't want that other foot to look like it's floating. The other thing you might do is clone some of the grass right in front of that shoe. So that way it looks like her feet, because if she was standing on grass, her feet would be pressed down in the grass. So these are all little giveaways, dead giveaways to say, oh, that's a composite because she's like, she must weigh like the weight of a feather because she's standing on blades of grass and her feet aren't going into the grass. So you, you got to look at it that way too. All right, so let's look at the harmonization. We're, let's let's get the harmonization out of the way. So filter, um, harmonize, or newer filter, harmonization. Hopefully I won't have to go back and do what I think I have to go. Oh, okay, good, I got out. All right, and that, uh, again, the strength's a little too high there. I'd probably bring it down a bit. And this is our before, and this is our after. Look at her dress. It kind of just takes some of the white out of the dress and gives us more of that color that would be cast from the from the outdoor scene onto her dress. And again, if you think it's too much or you think it's too dark or too light, you can go ahead and adjust accordingly. I'll say right about there. So that's the harmonization before, after, before, after and tweak it to your heart's content. But let's just say they were very happy with this composite. And the only thing that's bugging me now is the grass. So let's get a new layer going here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, because again, see how her feet are like above the grass? That just wouldn't be the case. Uh, so we got a new layer. We can go to our stamp, clone stamp. We can um, make our brush smaller. Hold down and make sure we say sample all layers. Good. And we're just going to go ahead and just hold it down here. Hold down our option key. And kind of just out. Oh, need it to be above her. Hang on. There we go. Not too, uh, I did too much. Hang on. Let's undo, undo. Because I couldn't see what I was doing. So let's just a little bit. A little bit around the edge. I thought I moved this layer up. Oh, I'm still in the wrong layer, that's why. Move this layer up. Oh, I, I undid it back down. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, delete the layer. <laughs> Just it's easier to do a new layer. New layer. Okay, there we go. Okay, and option or alt. There we go. Just a little around that edge. And again, you can lower the opacity of this layer a little bit, but just so her feet don't look like they're just standing in the middle of grass without being inside the grass a little bit. So uh, that might come in from the edges as well. And it's, gonna, it's, it's difficult because you're trying to make her feet not look like they're cut off either. So the grass is short. So you, you might actually take some of the grass, put it like slightly above um, that layer and then lower the opacity up just a little bit around the edge to kind of make it look like her feet are kind of more sinking in. Um, again, just challenging because this is why you don't see composites do feet very often because it just, it's hard to make it look natural. Uh, zoomed out, it's not so bad, but zoomed in, I could still tell. So I would work with the grass a little bit more to kind of tweak it, um, tweak it up. All right. So we are, we are out of time. We're going to save this one, head back, and that will put it back in Lightroom because, again, we edited the one that was in Lightroom, not a new uh, PSD. One more thing I will show you real quick. Let's go ahead and open up this one. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. There we go. Um, you might run into a situation where you want to do a composite and the background is not enough. So we're going to go to um, Crop. We're still in Lightroom, sorry. There we go. 
We're gonna go to crop. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Crop, we're gonna choose content aware. And that way, if we crop away from the image, because we need more image space, and hit enter and let it calculate, it should give us more of that background. And luckily it did not give us more hands. <laughs> so we got more background to go ahead and put in. So I have got like less than a minute left. And here's the one I wanna use. Let's go ahead and open up this. Let's go ahead and grab our object selection tool. And let's go ahead and grab one of these planets, one of these earths. And let's copy it and let's paste it. And you would do your um, smart object, but we're gonna go ahead and just scale it. Now, the thing is here, you wanna make the fingers look right because the fingers wouldn't be behind, they wouldn't all be behind it, they wouldn't all be in front of it. So we're gonna go ahead and select subject. And we're going to um, duplicate him onto a new layer above the planet as well. And then you would mask out the thumbs so that they look like they're behind. So mask, brush, black paint, bigger brush, mask out the thumbs so that it looks like his hand is behind it and in front of it at the same time. And that's just another quick compositing tip. So thanks everyone for catching this live. If you watch it live, thanks for watching the replays. I will see you in the middle of July and stay tuned for the um, Adobe Creative Challenge, Daily Creative Challenge. Cheers, everybody. Thanks. Catch you. Have a great summer.